Welcome back to For I Have Sinned. My name is Jess, and if you are watching us on YouTube, you can see that Lauren is not here. And that is because she is no longer a part of this podcast. No, I'm just kidding. She's totally a part of this podcast. Um, no, she's in the midst of moving, and uh, that's why we've been MIA, so to speak. So, yeah, we've had a lot going on. Lauren's moving is stressful, so I feel for Lauren. Um, so today, I guess I'm, I'm going to do kind of a mini episode. Uh, but before I start, I just want to say thank you to my cousin Jason. If you're watching us on YouTube, you have, might have noticed that we have a new intro video, which is so cool. I love it. Lauren loves it. Thank you, Jason. So, so cool. Uh, also want to give a shout out to our newest patron, Jamie. Uh, thank you, Jamie, for subscribing. Uh, I've known Jamie for probably like 15 years, about, maybe more, I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, but thank you to all our patrons and new patron, Jamie. So this is actually a case that someone wrote, someone emailed us and uh, his name is Job. He's from the Netherlands, and this is kind of like his hometown murder. Um, so if you guys want to write in to us, I will, at the end of the episode, I'll, I'll give you more information. But yeah, thank you, Job, for writing in. This happened in his hometown of, I believe it's pronounced Bladell, in 1992. Bladell is one hour southeast of Amsterdam and 15 minutes from the Belgium border. Bladell was a small farm and industrial town of about 10,000 inhabitants. And Job wrote, currently there are 15,000 inhabitants. We are booming. So they're growing. Uh, up until 1992, the most heinous crimes that occurred were typical and small burglaries. So, you know, small town. Not a lot of action, not a lot going on as far as crimes. Uh, I'm sure everybody just felt very safe um, if the only thing that's happening is the occasional burglary. So I'm sure this was the type of town that, you know, had their slept with their doors open, unlocked, not open. That would be crazy. <laughs> so enter Meet Van Bommel. Her name is Priya is Prim Holy crap. Her name is, I can't speak. You guys know I can never, ever speak. And I'm, I apologize for it. <laughs> uh, Meet's name is spelled M-I-E-T, but again, pronounced Meet. She was a longtime bar owner. She grew up bartending since her early teens. She was married to Jan Van Bommel, who died in the mid 80s. Meet suffered from diabetes and had to have her left leg amputated which resulted in her leaving the bar mostly in the hands of her staff. She recovered and was fitted with a prosthetic leg within a year. She then had a nurse come to her home, which was next door to her bar, each day to get her up in the morning and then to help her to bed at night. During the day, she was said to have lived her life to the fullest. She was known as a woman of habit. Her prosthetic was always in the same spot next to her bed. The bedroom curtains were always open wide. She lived on the first floor of her house while another family lived upstairs. Her bedroom was basically in her living room, and the home was on the town's main street. On Tuesday, February 11th, 1992, she had a card game scheduled with two of her best friends, starting at 7 p.m. and ending at 10. During the night, between 11 p.m. to 7 a.m. on Wednesday, her home was broken into. The window of her front door was smashed and which gave the intruder access to enter the home. The suspect surprised her while she was in bed, raped her, and then strangled her to death with his bare hands. Her house was found untouched. Nothing was broken or left astray. Her purse was close by and no money was taken. When the morning nurse came by at around 7.30 a.m., she saw the broken window, and inside she found Meat's lifeless body. She called the police, who came and secured the crime scene. They did find DNA on her nightgown, but at the time, they didn't have access to the DNA testing that was needed. Besides a palm print on her hospital bed rail, 
there was no other evidence. Hundreds of men had their prints taken, but a match was not found. There were no real suspects at all. Meat had no children, and her siblings had all died before her. Fast forward to 2006, the police decided to reopen the case, having gained access to the DNA testing that they needed. The suspect's DNA is on file, and the police believe the murderer is someone from Bladell. All men between 40 to 55 years old were asked to submit DNA, but no match has been found so far. Police believe the crime was committed by a shy, socially awkward, and sexually frustrated man, there is a 15,000 reward in euros in connection with this crime. Job says to this day it sends shockwaves through his small community. So that's all there is about that. I actually, Job, you know, wrote about this uh, in the email, but I tried to do some research and I found very little in English and the few uh, articles I did find in English um, the website allowed you to translate to from Dutch to English. So yeah, there I couldn't find too many extra details. But uh, if you are listening to us and you're in the in the Netherlands, you know any information, you get some euros, fifteen thousand of them to be exact. <laughs> um, so yeah, thank you, Job. That's really cool that you wrote into us. Um, if anybody else would like to write into us and have us cover a hometown murder, um, or just any case that you find interesting that you would like us to cover, write to us at for I have sin pod at gmail.com. Also consider join, joining our Patreon. There's a lot of cool stuff going on over there. I post on there pretty regularly. Uh, lately haven't as much just because we've been, we've got, we've had a lot of stuff going on. Like I said, Lauren's moving, but we do have a tier that if you subscribe to it, you get early access to our episodes. So you hear the episodes before anybody else. You also get, uh, access to crime scene photos. Some of them are pretty brutal, uh, but some people find that interesting I don't particularly enjoy looking at victims, uh, dead bodies or what happened to them, but I do find crime scene photos very interesting. So there's that. We also have a few tiers, one where you can choose three cases that we cover. And there's another tier where you can actually record an episode with us of a, a case of your choosing. And then we also have merch. We have stickers. We have mugs. We're going to have t-shirts soon. We'll see how it goes. But yeah, join us. Thanks to all of our patrons. And uh, that's about it. I hope you guys have... A oh, also, uh, Lauren will be up and running this weekend. Today is Friday that I'm recording this, November 6th. So on Sunday, we should be recording another episode, which means early next week you will hear it or watch it. So, uh, okay, well, stay safe, wash your hands, and please don't kill your family. Bye, sinners.